Good morning, Dean Starr, and good morning, dear teachers. I hope that you're doing great today. For my report, I'm going to discuss the differences between traditional grammar and modern linguistics. Alright, so I have a question. So, what is the difference between traditional grammar and modern linguistics? Traditional grammar and modern linguistics are two branches of language studies. Traditional grammar is the oldest of the two, and its origin runs back to the 15th century. Linguistics uh, is actually a relatively new branch of language study. It is also important to note that traditional grammar mainly focuses on the written language while modern linguistics considered to be uh, the speech was the basic form of the language okay so what is a traditional grammar when we say traditional grammar it actually refers to the collection of prescriptive rules and concepts about the structure of language so as you can see po, when we say traditional grammar, it actually includes different pres prescriptive rules that actually users should follow. And these rules of usage users should avoid. So books of traditional grammar generally contains different list of grammatical terms. The definition of these terms and advice on using standard grammar, which includes correct punctuations, the spelling and diction as well. Even though linguists consider traditional grammar as an irrational method to study language and the grammar, we can actually still find uh, those basic Latin based concepts. As you can see, po, this, uh, this is a Latin script, the picture on the screen. So basically, we can still find this basic Latin-based concepts of grammar in English textbooks and usage guides. Okay, while the, while the modern linguistics, when we say modern linguistics, uh, linguistics or modern linguistics refers to the scientific study of language and its structure. This includes the study of features such as the grammar, the syntax, and phonetics. So as you can see from the picture, uh, this is the major levels of, or these are the major levels of linguistic structure. So we all, uh, first we have the phonetics, which is the speech sound. And the next one is the phonology, which is the phonemes. And we, only have, we also have the morphology, which is the words, and the syntax, which is the phrases and sentences, the semantics, literal meaning of phrases and sentences, and the last one is the pragmatics. When we say pragmatics, this is the meaning in context of this course. So since modern linguistic is actually referring to the scientific study of the language and its structure, it is actually include different features like the grammar, the syntax, the phonetics, and um, this modern linguistics regards language as a system. And this is only uh, a grammar is actually considered as a systematic description of a certain language, um, either oral or written. And most importantly, in modern linguistics, is actually the descriptive. It doesn't prescribe how one should use language. Instead, it actually describes how natural language functions. Moreover, it considers oral language as the basic form of the language. And in modern linguistics, Linguists also consider language 
change is a natural process in linguistics. A language that doesn't change is a dead language. So what are those differences between them? What are those differences between traditional grammar and the modern linguistic? So as you can see from the chart, from the picture, um, there is there's a column for a traditional grammar fault. There are different uh, the definition, the origin, the type, the focus, the standards. So when we say traditional grammar fault, it's uh, the meaning of this is, is this is a collection of prescriptive rules and concepts about the structure of language. While in modern linguistics, this is the study of language and its structure including the study of grammar, the syntax, and phonetics. Well, the origin of this one is, and uh, the origin of the traditional grammar is, it can be traced back to the 15th century, while the modern linguistics derive from traditional grammar. The type of traditional grammar is actually prescriptive, which is based from the rules and concepts about the structure of language. Well, the modern linguistics is more on descriptive. The focus of the traditional grammar is the written form, while the modern linguistics is more on speech or words. And when it comes to standards, uh, in traditional grammar, it has forced language into a Latin-based framework. And the modern linguistics uh, does not force one language into the framework of another. So this will be the summary of uh, the differences. What are uh, the differences between the traditional and the modern linguistics? Although there is a distinct difference between traditional grammar and modern linguistics, it is important to note that the latter was derived from the former. However, traditional grammar is prescriptive, whereas modern linguistics is descriptive. Okay, so what are the major conflicts between the traditional and the modern linguistics to the study of language? All right, so the study of language has actually witnessed different conflicts and debates between this uh, traditional and the modern linguistics. So I'm going to give you two uh, major conflicts between uh, these two perspectives. So the first one is uh, the descriptive versus the generative linguistics. So when we say traditional linguistics, it is actually often takes a descriptive approach uh, that actually uh, aims to describe and analyze the structures and patterns found in natural languages and it focuses on observing and documenting the language as it is used by the speakers and another conflict is that uh, the surface structure versus the deep structure so when it comes to traditional linguistics it tends to focus on the surface structure of language uh, examining the observable forms and structures of sentences and utterances. It also places uh, e emphasis on the analysis of syntactic and semantic structures at the surface level. And when it comes to generative linguistics, on the other hand, it actually um, explores uh, from the word deep structure of language, uh, which actually refers to the underlying abstract representation and the rules that generate the surface structures and to six to uncover and uh, let's, uh, let's call the deep syntactic and at the same time, the semantic principles that govern the language. And let's proceed now to the descriptive language strategies. 
I'm going also to give you a uh, different descriptive language strategies. Okay, so language is learned most effectively when it is built into times you naturally spend with children or let's say students rather than setting aside special teaching times. So the following, okay, so use meaningful activities as the focus of communication. So one of those activities is when we say that a shared interest. When you shared your interest to other people, it is uh, it means that this will serve as a meaningful activity. And it actually focuses on the communication because we are about to share our uh, same interest to other people and we also have a care ritual and at the same time we also have a play situation so through these activities uh, we focus to the communication and first descriptive language strategy is commenting from the word itself, comment. So first, we, we have three under commenting. First, we have describing. So when we say describing, when we are about uh, to add the language that actually describes what is happening that actually help the students or the teacher or I mean the children understand the world and later they can actually express their own thoughts, uh, their own words in new and more complex ways. So in effective commenting, it follow the child's uh, to talk about the things that actually interest or that are of interest to them at that moment. And we also have the self-talk. When we say self-talk, when we are about to to talk about what we are doing as you are doing it for example uh, you're trying to explain or trying to uh, talk to yourself or talk to the children about what they are doing and we also have the parallel uh, the parallel talking or parallel talk you watch the action um, and then we describe it without expecting a response as uh, if you are about to broadcast or you watch the action and describe it without expecting a response as if you are a broadcaster so parang let's pretend that we are uh, a broadcaster in this um parallel talking okay so uh next next strategy we have the interpreting uh, when we see interpreting, it's adding language to match the intention of a child's message. Uh, the actions, the gestures, and the sounds is a powerful way for the children, for us, to communicate or to connect with the, the learners and to other people uh, to foster their learning and at the same time, their development when it comes to oral language okay so for example a child or a student looks at you points out the window and says ba so uh, a bird wow so something like that so meaning you're about to interpret something about what the child or what the student is trying to say and we also have the sec uh, the third we have the modeling when we say modeling it's a repeating sounds or words with correct pronunciation directly after the child has spoken so they can actually hear your model so basically there is no expectation that they have to repeat the sounds or words in this strategy Okay, so that will be the uh, modeling. You're about to repeat the sounds or words. Uh, and then, after that, the, the child or the student directly spoken. 
so they can actually hear your model next we have the fourth strategy in descriptive linguistic the fading support and we say fading support a gradually reduced scaffolding such as modeling commenting and offering suggestions uh, of course to help those children and to the students to grow their capabilities in social communication especially in peer-to-peer -peer interactions again so we have four uh, strategies first one we have commenting second interpreting third modeling and the fourth one is the feeding uh, support so that's all for my report and thank you so much for listening and i do hope that you learned something from this discussion thank you and god bless everyone goodbye